Hi there, it's Vanessa. I'm here to wrap up all of the books that I ended up reading in the month of March. The first one that I have to talk to you about is Will by Will Smith, which I already returned to the library. It's kind of weird to talk about this book now considering like all that has happened with Will Smith. Will is Will Smith's autobiography about his life. It's co-written by Mark Manson um, and this book really has like an entertaining, like, fast-paced, easygoing way about it. It's very light-hearted and I really enjoyed that about it. I could see like all of the things that made him who he is. It was fascinating to see like how he came up in the rap world and then how he switched into doing TV and then movies. It's also really interesting in this book to see how kind of behind the scenes things are and and how him and his like co-workers, producers decide what scripts he takes on or not. The way that he talks about family and his relationships in this book, there's like a way that he is self-aware and vulnerable in exposing himself in a way in this book. He does it in a self-deprecating manner though where it makes it seem to me like maybe he still hasn't like 100% got into self-actualization with his therapy um, to you know see and view his family in a more healthy way. He's very honest that he puts himself first before his family um, and that's kind of hard to read. There are a lot of things that he says in this book that made me more on Jada's side than on Will's side for pretty much anything and everything. After that I read How to Find What You're Not Looking For by Vera Hirnandani. I read this on a plane ride pretty much half on the plane there and then half on the plane back. I'm getting to understand that the way that Vera Hirnandani writes her characters, um, they are very, very melancholy, quiet, pensive. Um, they are really in their heads. At times that made this book just a little bit slower paced and it's definitely more a character study. In this book, the main character is living in the late 1960s. With all of the social changes that are happening in the late 1960s, her sister who's older than her decides to marry someone outside of her race and religion and that's kind of like something that is very difficult for her parents to accept and you see kind of this back and forth discussion of that. Um, the main character has a learning disability. In the 1960s this was not really something that was acknowledged. There's a really lovely teacher that's kind of helping the main character through that as well. This book really made an impact by the end when I read the author's note and how her own personal life is created by you know two parents of two different races is coming together and also um, by having a child with a learning disability similar to what the main character has in this. So it kind of seemed to me like all of the things that affect her life inspired this book and I think that made it more touching because it's all coming from somewhere inside her heart. But I don't think that this is like the perfect book and I also don't think I like this better than The Night Diary by her. After that I read a classic and that's Charlotte's Web by E.B. White. I had never read this book before and I listened to it. I listened to the full cast narrative of it that is mostly narrated by Meryl Streep. She's like the main narrator and I like this but I didn't love it and I don't know if it's because I didn't read it as a child but it came across kind of simple in ways and also kind of like I didn't believe or care that much about the friendships as much as I thought that I would, like as much as I thought that they would really touch me. Definitely it's a touching book and it's a sweet book and I like the main messages of it. There's a lot of like humor in it as well that's interspersed that I really enjoyed but I thought that it was going to be like a completely mind-blowing read and I think for me it's more like a three and a half star read. Then after that I read A Soft Place to Land by Janae Marks. This is probably my favorite of all of the books that I read for middle grade March and this book focuses on a main character and her family who are moving to an apartment because their house has just been foreclosed on. The father has lost his job and they're trying to make ends meet and mostly it's the mom being the breadwinner in this situation as the father is looking for a job. The main character Joy is having a lot of difficulties accepting that and you know like accepting that she doesn't have this home that she grew up in anymore and also um, acclimating to this new apartment complex where like there's a lot of people and everybody kind of knows everybody. What I found really sweet about this book is how uh, friendly everyone was at this apartment complex. As soon as they moved in like they just were you know accepted with open arms and I really really love that. I really enjoyed the friendship dynamics in this. The main character becomes friends with um, one of the, the girls in the apartment complex. There's kind of like this hideout spot in the apartment complex that the grown-ups don't know about that the kids have kind of remade to be kind of their own space and I really like that. I feel like as a kid that's something I would have loved. There's also something I did not expect in this book. There's a lot of dogs and 
and dog walking and taking care of dogs. There's kind of like a mystery element in this that I wish had panned out a little bit different because when we finally got that reveal, I didn't, uh, I didn't really love how it happened and I thought that there was going to be something else there. But I understand it for the purpose of the plot and the conclusion of the story. It makes sense. I just thought that it was going to go somewhere else. So I really enjoyed this book and I ended up giving this one um, four stars. After that, I read quite a few adult books. One of them is White Ivy by Susie Yang. I really had kind of like a mixed reaction and even like a mixed experience reading this book where at times I felt very enamored by it and like I needed to know what was going to happen next. Uh, other times I was really shocked and I couldn't believe what was happening and then at other times I was kind of bored and I was kind of you know waiting like what is going to happen. Not really loving the characters as much as I thought that I would. So I went through a lot of emotions reading this book. White Ivy focuses on a main character who has grown up in a family that wants her to reach this kind of pinnacle of success. They're an immigrant family so they kind of see this you know success and finding that success in you know getting married and having kids and having like a white picket fence kind of a situation. She has a lot of issues with her family and with how they raised her and with what they expect out of her. You're following her as she has this friend group that then you know like many years pass and then she meets that same person again. They're very different dynamics and like what it is that they want out of this relationship like they like each other but are they really together because they like each other or are they together because they both want to fit into these boxes that their families want them to fit into and then there's also this very very complicated relationship she has with this other guy that other boy that she grew up with that is now a man that she meets later on they're very very toxic relationship with each other that at times is also like very lovely and understandable and yeah it's a very very complicated relationship very accessible I would say but like a, an accessible literary book where there's a lot going on under the surface so there's those thrilling elements that make this accessible to a lot of people but then there's a lot of like themes and messages of trying to figure out what it is that success means after that I read a book called seeing ghosts by Kat Chow and one thing that I noticed as I was reading this is that I ended up reading like three books or four books back to back that were all by Asian women or Asian uh, women writers, some of them by Asian American women and I found it really interesting how a lot of them overlapped each other in what they were saying and then how at other times they were very different from each other um, and I just really really liked that. I didn't intend to do that and they were just kind of books that I had on my mind to read next. They kind of paired well together with each other. So Seeing Ghosts is a memoir by Kat Chow who's an NPR podcaster and producer and this book is her memoir of losing her mother and also her relationship with her father and her sisters through all of this. A story of her growing up as a child of an immigrant. I really found this such a touching memoir. I had a lot of troubles with it at first where it wasn't really you know like all coming together for me and I think it's because you need to get used to the style of it a little bit. It's told in what seems like vignettes. No story is really told from beginning to end. Instead what you're getting is all of these little stories being told to you that then over time over the pages that you're reading are starting to form this you know idea of what this family is really like. It's also hard to get into at first because a lot of the time Kat Chow is talking to her mother and saying like you did this, you did this and then she'll go back to talking in you know first person like this happened to me I did this and so that was kind of hard to get into at first as well but after I got and I started understanding like the beats and how she writes um, I did end up really liking that as a choice that she made and how she wrote this book. I think what you come to this book for is for that immigrant story. You come to this book for her relationship with her father. That's what I found the most beautiful about this book is seeing how she views her father in such a positive light but at the same time she has so much troubles with him um, when it comes to some of the decisions that he makes, some of the things that she feels are um, just like, what What are you doing, dad? <laughs> what are you doing in that situation? And I totally felt that. I totally related to that because there are moments that my dad has said things to me that I just feel like, what are you even talking about? Like, that doesn't make any sense or that doesn't really line up A to B to C or like, this is not really like a good idea, business idea to do. <laughs> but a lot of immigrants 
and Im immigrant fathers particularly, I feel like are go-getters in that way and they don't care what other people think and I think Kat Chow and I and many immigrant daughters, we grew up in this country where you are being looked at and for me, I'm just like in general a, a person that is very aware of, of like how other people perceive you. That's probably not like a positive thing about me, but it's something that I know about myself um, versus like my dad and Kat Chow's dad just do not care what other people think about them and just like mind their business and do their thing and like whatever idea that they come up with they think is like genius and they go ahead and do it. But I felt like she was very vulnerable in a lot of this book and how she talked about her mom, how she talked about her dad. I love the dynamic between three sisters. There are three sisters here and Kat Chow is the youngest and I just really love like how they talked to each other and how they talked to each other about their parents. Um, I really also just related to that as well. I really feel like this book is similar to a lot of other immigrant books that I have read that I have really enjoyed um, and if you like those kinds of memoirs I totally recommend that you pick this up just knowing that it is gonna take a little bit to get into this book. The next book that I read that was also by an Asian author is Intimacies by Katie Kitamura and this book is uh, an interesting literary fiction book. It's a very quiet observant book of what is happening in in this community. It takes place in the Hague in the Netherlands which I found really fascinating fascinating as a setting. A lot of it takes place inside of this international court that the main character is a translator at. So she is in charge of um, a lot of cases where, you know, people are being taken to trial that have done like atrocities in other countries and they're taken to like international court, international law to be, um, you know, tried against for these crimes. And she a lot of the times is the one that is translating like what witnesses are saying or what, you know, the bad guys quote unquote or the, the suspects are saying. It's about like her internal life and living in the Hague she it seems very isolated there's nobody there that she really knows except for a friend and then a man that she starts seeing um, and dating during the the book trying to understand like why she's here and does she want to stay here she's constantly thinking about that throughout the whole book is does she want to leave and do something else or does she want to remain in the Hague there's discussions here about the neighborhoods that they are in and like what makes a safe neighborhood and what makes it an unsafe neighborhood and really what this book is about is about how people in everyday life hide their secrets from each other and hide the things that they want to be doing that they don't want other people to be seeing them doing and like what lengths they go to hide those secrets. There's like a, a sense of suspense and, and dread as you're reading this but it's a book that I still felt was very much like an immersive read because of those elements. I feel like the ending of this book is what like broke it for me because I really thought that this book was going to be when I first started reading it I couldn't stop and then once I got towards the end and like the resolution of all of these ideas and questions that she had had throughout the whole book I didn't quite feel like it landed for me at the end um, and I think I ended up giving this book three stars I really enjoyed my time with it as I was reading it but I just feel like it could have been concluded a little bit better after that I read Stanley Tucci's Taste and this is my life through food. I listened to this and I like this, but I didn't love it. Um, I thought that it was a good memoir, but it's not a memoir that like really changed my life. I also liked Will Smith's memoir more than Stanley Tucci's. It's not like a very, you know, expansive or like big memoir. It's just little stories here and there. A lot of them were quite, quite funny, especially like him talking about, you know, how his parents make food and his mom particularly or his wife. There are some stories here too about like Meryl Streep and like other actors and things that he's been involved in that were charming and entertaining and funny but I didn't think that this like changed my life or that I really even truly needed this. I mean considering what I've gotten from watching his show on CNN um, Searching for Italy I think that that does a much better job of really translating his charisma and like even his family stories because he has had his wife on there and his parents on that show. I I think that that came across better on TV than it did through this book. I only have two more books to talk about. The next one was My Begging Chart by Keeler Roberts. This is the only um, graphic book that I read this past month and I thought that I was going to read more but I, that didn't really happen. This is kind of like a, a random book that I picked up. I saw it on a list somewhere and I was like hmm that kind of looks interesting and after reading this I, I automatically put like every other book that she has out on like want to read on Goodreads because I 
just really enjoyed this. This was really funny, really deadpan, and kind of absurd at times. They are just small comics of everyday life of Keila Roberts, and she talks in general about like her interactions with her husband, her interactions with her daughter, dealing with multiple sclerosis, um, and just general like feelings of depression that she might have some days. There's just a lot of humor in this and how that is delivered. It's not very morose, but it is kind of like that entropy and sadness that exists in our everyday lives all the time um, that really came across in a funny way in these comics. It's also about you know living through covid a little bit and you know just kind of being stuck at home all the time this is kind of the exact pitch of tone of humor that i like in in graphic novels and comics um and just books in general it's hard to make me giggle and laugh when i read things in particular but this was exactly the kind of thing that i needed in the moment and then the last book that i finished was a place to belong by cynthia Karohata. this was the last book that i read for middle grade march and the one that took me the longest to get through and i think it's because it's not very plot focused and it's not even very character focused it's a book that's very focused on what we are seeing it's a very observing book and it's a book about day-to-day -day life after world war ii in japan after um, atomic bombs are dropped on hiroshima so the main character hanako is going back to japan with her family so her brother and her two parents her mom and dad and they're staying with her grandparents who she's never really been with they accept them with open arms and they become tenant farmers with the grandparents there and and the whole book is really just like a story of survival, like everyday survival. There's not like any more, you know, fighting and actual war happening, but it's like trying to put the pieces back together and trying to, uh, you know, be able to have a meal every day. I think that this book is really lovely in the depiction of family particularly. I love the grandparents in this book and I thought that they brought so much tenderness and lightheartedness. And like even if within the circumstances that they are in, they were just so happy to have their family there with them and just teaching them things and showing them traditions and um, telling them like how it is that they do things there. While it could be like long-winded at times and it's a little bit of a longer book for a middle grade book, it would have been a little bit better if it had a little bit more plot to it or like something that we're trying to get to. I still just really loved being in this world that I, I never knew. Now I definitely want to read Kira Kira by Cynthia Karahata. I have read one other book by her that was like like a younger middle grade book so it's it was a little bit more silly than this book here and I really liked how serious this book was it's usually what I like in middle grade fiction one more thing that I wanted to talk about I didn't get to everything in my middle grade March TBR the secret garden which um, I decided to DNF for now I couldn't get past to the way that the book talks about people from India and like servants that they had and I know that this book is really old and you know that's just what you're gonna get with classic books but it was just really hard for me because it happened multiple times like in different passages it wasn't just like throwaway lines that you can kind of be like okay you know like they really went and dived deep into like how these people are, are subservient and like they, they're just docile and they just do what you tell them to it was just leaving a bad taste in my mouth and i decided you know i don't want to read this book it was like putting off reading it too like i re i didn't read a book for like four or five days and then i put this book down and i picked up something else and i read it in two days so it was definitely that book that was holding me back and I'm just gonna DNF it for now and just let it go. That is it. That is all that I ended up reading for the month of March. If you've read any of these books or would like to read any of these books now that you've heard me talk about them, please let me know down below in the comments and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye!